The Resilience of the Muskogee Ribbon Dress. Beskida, commonly referred to as the Green Corn Ceremony, or Busk, represents not only the renewal of the annual cycle, but the spirit and tradition that were you know strong enough to lead that dance and you know do that aspect of what our ceremonies are for so the ribbon dance um, has also been described to me that it's like a it was also known as like a fish dance and so if you see a fish swimming in like the pond or in a creek whatever they're swimming river probably not a creek but if you see one swimming you'll notice that when the light hits it different colors kind of fluorescent off of it and um, so it was also considered like a fish dance and that's where like all the different color ribbons come from. Early Muscogee people wore clothing of woven plant materials and animal skin or fur, depending on the climate. During the summer, they preferred lightweight fabrics woven from tree bark, grasses, or reeds. During the harsh winters, they used animal skins and fur for warmth. Jay McGirt was a Muscogee treasure. For the extensive research on the evolution of Muscogee and Seminole clothing, McGirt said originally Muscogee women wore no garment on their upper body. If a garment was worn, it was a buckskin poncho top with fine fringe. After European contact, the poncho top was replaced with a calico shirt. Calico material was introduced into England from India, McGirt said. Broadcloth wraparound skirts were trimmed with floral and 
leaf beadwork designs. After removal, the introduction of the dominant culture and Christianity contributed to the loss of Muscogee material culture. Ramona Mason was another Muscogee treasurer and advisor of both traditional and contemporary Muscogee clothing. She was an artist and well known for her Muscogee wedding buckskin dresses. She also guided the revitalization of a modern wraparound broadcloth skirt and yarn belt for traditional dress outside of ceremonial settings. Many Muscogee royalty have wore the ribbon shirt, broadcloth wrap skirt, and yarn belt as a symbol of traditional dress. Brenda Lesarge was a Muscogee treasurer and seamstress. For many years, Muscogee royalty wore the ribbon shirt with yoke and ruffle as a traditional wear. The ruffles, like Jay McGirt once said, was something Muscogee people were fond of. The ruffled ribbon dress became a trend and symbolic of the ribbon dance that honors the women and the significance of the turtles in our culture. Royalty also began to wear an apron with the dress. The apron was a utility of our matriarch women of the home and fields. Pearl Thomas, a past senior miss, is carrying on her knowledge and interpretation of the Muscogee traditional dress in her family. She is one of few traditional dressmakers of today. Say, Pearl Chilaki Thomas is my name and uh, grew up at, uh, in the Oakmorgan County area and uh, household of uh, uh, Full Blood Creek parents and, uh, and also grew up with my Full Blood uh, Creek aunts and uncles and who I learned a great deal from. And as far as the, the making of uh, dresses and our garments that we uh, grew up in, uh, my mother, Peggy Chalaki, uh, made her made our dresses, our clothes, uh, from the time we were real small. And, uh, and she, uh, our first recollection is that she made uh, she saved all of her flower sacks. In the beginning, they used to be all white or kind of tan looking flower sacks. And uh, she would save those and she would make our dresses with it. Made all of the like baby dresses and then our dresses as we uh, uh, got ready to go to school where they were all homemade dresses. And um, then whenever later on in years, well, they began to make uh, flower, the had flowery print, uh, flower uh, print dresses. So she'd make us some dresses like that. Then she'd use her white ones and made pinafores to go over our dresses. And she did this in the beginning by hand. She made them by hand. And uh, later on, I remember her getting a treadle sewing machine and she made our start sewing that way always and always uh, the uh, elders elder women wore aprons with their uh, dresses or skirts all the time and uh, they uh, they were always white and they always had a big pocket on it and they would carry handkerchiefs you know and they looked more like a man's handkerchief I don't know if it if it was, or if they had made them like that, but they always kind of carried one like that. That's where they would put some of the, their valuables in, and they tie it up, and then they keep it in their pocket. Uh, I know that uh, if you live out on a, in the country and on the farm, and you raised animals, you raised chickens, or uh, you had a big uh, vegetable garden or something, well, those those big aprons came in handy because they were there. There was no Walmart sacks. So they had to uh, uh, use the, they used the pockets, and then they would gather up their uh, the hems of their uh, large aprons and use that as a, a carrying uh, uh, container. Put their eggs in, or put their vegetables in, or you know things like that. And uh, but I can always always remember that 
my aunt always had the aprons on and my mother always wore aprons and uh, uh, and I wear aprons I, ha I, I wear aprons majority of the time and uh, I know that at church at our camp houses there was always aprons hanging up somewhere because mama would always uh, people would come over and uh, that would come and eat with us or something, they would always say, well, can I help? You know, can I wash dishes or uh, uh, clear the table or whatever, or put the food on the table? And mom would always tell me, there's aprons up there if you need one you know, so that you won't get dirty. I can remember mama saying that. And they would, uh, she always had aprons, extra aprons, always there in the camp house for people to use. Two dresses here that I had made. One is my dress that I had made, and this one belonged to my daughter. I made this back in, in the, about the middle 90s. Um, I liked the design at the time when I made this one with the round collar, the, what they consider a Peter Pan collar, and uh, the three buttons opening in the front, and then it has a yoke. There is a yoke there. And... Uh, and at the time, that was the kind of thing what we were making. A lot of people were making. And and um, we both have worn ours. And, of course, and the white uh, apron. And because um, I had also uh, was, was told that the uh, uh, married women that wore the white apron, you didn't put any rough, uh, any, uh, uh, ribbon on it. And so anyway, I so I just took it that so I just make plain white ones anyway because that's what I remember my uh mother, my aunties, my grandma, they all wore white ribbon white uh aprons. But two different styles here of dresses. This is my first one here that uh, uh Charlie Coker He's uh, passed on since, and he, he made this for me. I was going to compete uh, in the uh, the first year that they had the Senior Miss uh, Muscogee Nation. Uh, and this was the pattern that he used, and so that's where I got my idea for the pattern of the other two dresses that I, that I had, that I made my daughter myself, and using this. He has two buttons on this, this has three. And... Um, uh, it doesn't have uh, that full of a ruffle on the bottom of it, which is fine, which is I, which I prefer, you know. But he also used the small ribbon on it, but he just on the skirt alone. He didn't put it on, on the top, but he used it on, just on the skirt alone. And uh, but that's but Charlie Coker made that for me. I had had the material, and I thought it was so pretty, you know. And I bought it, that was my intention is to have a dress made, but, and, uh, but I decided, well, I think I want one that's got the ruffle on because everybody else, everybody else was doing it. That's the reason, the only reason why I did that. So anyway, uh, Brenda Lassarge, who's also passed on since, but she was a great maker of, of, uh, Creek dresses also. So she, she made this for me and, uh, with the, with the ruffle on it. And uh, it opens in the back and just has a, a button closure on, on it. And uh, it doesn't have the the big uh, ruffle on the bottom of it. But the material is, is uh, more lightweight. And, but I've had it for a number of years and so. And, uh, but I've also had some I chose this kind of a ribbon to go in it, black, green, and red, you know, which that's the colors in there. And she she put the uh, ribbon on the uh, sleeve itself and, and the ruffle. So, uh, but this is the one I've worn for many, many times. You know? My grandmother, Carol Tiger, enjoys making traditional dresses. Okay, my name is uh, Eugenia Catherine Tiger but everyone knows me as Carol Tiger. That's my uh, given nickname. Basically, ladies and girls ask me to sew uh, dresses and 
shirts and I learned that from my mom too and I uh, really I think I was asked to uh, sew pageant dresses for Creek Nation and I started doing that and uh, it was uh, it was something to learn because I really didn't know at the beginning what it what it was about until uh, my daughter Cassandra she made made a history of it one day and I was reading it and uh, so it just sits several different ways that, that you could make a ribbon dress ribbon shirt so whenever someone asked me to make something that's what I went with and I tried to uh, keep patterns that that will help me to make those outfits and uh, I started making little pageant dresses for my granddaughter when she was entering pageants and uh, so it just started from there and that's what I've been doing here uh, all this time in my spare time or when somebody calls and needs an outfit so there I am making uh, a ribbon dress for someone. Ada Pigeon is the granddaughter of the shell shaker, the late Christine Hennehaw. Her mother made all her dresses, and she is now carrying on that tradition for her and her daughter. Hi, I'm Ada Pigeon. Um, <laughs> I'm a Skokie Creek Naps T Shawnee. Um, I belong to the Wind Clan and the New Yorker Tribal Town. Ribbons that I wear on my Creek dresses. Um, I try to wear as many as I can because it's ribbon dance. And you're there to show off your ribbons. And I, when I was younger, my mom had made a collar of ribbons for me and it just made it easier to put on and take off. And that's what I wear today. And that's what I make for my daughter for, sh for her to wear. Um, everyone's like, everyone asks, why do you wear all those ribbons? Well, it's ribbon dance. You're supposed to show off your ribbons. It's a dance that celebrates the woman. And I think when, when women wear their ribbons, and they're covered from head from the shoulders all the way down but it, it looks pretty uh, I've seen old pictures of women wearing ribbons from head to toe they were covered like you didn't see any part of their body and that's how I want to eventually get I might if you if you learn how to make it or at least know that you know, it's supposed to look a specific way, then maybe, maybe, you know, you'll be able to carry it on into the next, into the next future, into the next generation. Um, you know, I, I, I just, it's super important just to be able to, be able to dress yourself in the way you need to represent who you are. You know, um, and us as Creek women, we wear, we need to start wearing more of our dresses um, out in public and not be ashamed of who we are and what we wear. Make it the way you, it fits you, but don't stray too far from how it's supposed to look, how it's supposed to be. His day is Stonewall Louisa Harjo. I was Judy Miss Muscogee Creek Nation 2018-2019. And the reason I started making Creek dresses was because when I became a princess, a lot of people started asking me uh, what my dress symbolizes. And at times at the beginning, I didn't know what to say to them. And so that's when I started doing my research on what everything means on the Creek dresses. Over time, I know that traditional wear has evolved in each century that we and the reason that I would like to carry it on and show more people about making dresses is because 
um, whenever we would tra travel as princess, um, we would wear our skirts everywhere we went because we wanted people to know who we are. And even when we would ride on planes, they would ask, what are you wearing? And they didn't know that natives were still living. And that's why I would like to encourage all people to wear just any kind of skirt or any traditional dress that you, you made or your family have made and show it off and know what it means. About Creek dresses is you have to know what your dress means, what it signifies for your family and who made it and where they got their information just knowing anything about the dress because when people ask you, then you want to know and, and eventually spread the word about what our traditional dresses mean because it's it shows who we are and you want to be able to be confident in what you're wearing and how you're walking it or how you're styling it because there's always going to be a new trend anywhere, but this traditional wear, it's always going to stick with us. There's always going to be new trends through our traditional dresses as time goes on, but they're always going to be evolving and you need to show it in your way too, but also keeping the traditional wear still modest and how we like to wear it, but still showing how it represents you as a Muscogee woman.